Denim Couch Podcast. Whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa. The 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s with Steph with an F. Hi, guys. Welcome to the Denim Couch Podcast, where we chill on this denim couch and talk about the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. I'm Stephanie Tanner. Welcome. Hi guys, we are on a green picnic bench today and I am about to interview Shirley Sanders. We're just sitting here. Unfortunately, it's not on the denim couch. Uh, actually, the denim couch is driving by us right now. It's, it's, dry, it's literally driving by us right now. It's going home or vacationing in McCall, Idaho right now and it's going home in the back of my uncle's boat. That was the only way it was going to get home. This screen picnic bench is pleasant, but the denim couch is holy. (laughs) Let's dive into the story of the denim couch. So you're probably wondering why, just why in general, why the denim couch and where the heck did that come from? We were thrift shopping in McCall, Idaho, and I found my kid the cutest 70s overalls I've ever seen in my life. Uh, They say Superboy and some other 70s logo. Um, And one has a cute plane on it. As we were walking out, I saw this denim couch and just instantly fell in love. It was a match made in heaven. No one else understood why uh, I could possibly like this denim couch. But I loved it. And... After much convincing, much, much convincing, I got my husband to work it out so that we could take it home. Yeah, ultimately, the goal is to sit down with these amazing people who've lived in the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s and get their take on what life was like back in the day. And it's definitely a bonus when I get to spend, spend the time interviewing on the comfiest denim couch. Okay, so I started this podcast because I've had one question on my mind for so long. The question is, were previous generations happier in general than we are now? To be honest, I don't think there is a clear answer to this. I don't think it's a yes or no question. I think, even though I phrased it that way, I think the only way... I can get some sort of answer is by interviewing people about their experiences in the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. Okay, so I just looked down and and I'm pretty sure there's bird poop on my leggings. So that's that's the way we're gonna start off this interview. I I actually think it's the ice cream cake we had earlier today. Okay, that makes me feel better. And I don't remember seeing a bird. So yeah, pretty sure that's it. Okay, to start our interview. We get to hear from Shirley Sanders. Shirley is amazing. What hasn't Shirley done? She was a teacher for a long time. She has traveled more than anyone I know. She is a seamstress. She's owned her own business. She is a performer. And she has lived a long life and has a lot of experiences. I'm really excited to get into this interview and hear more about the 40s and 50s. podcast is about stories from the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. But not only that, um, it's about happiness and joy and people's experiences with happiness and joy, their opinions, their thoughts on happiness and joy in the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. All righty. So do you want to introduce yourself? I'm Shirley Sanders, and my maiden name is Payne, so I'm Shirley Payne Sanders, and I'm recording this on August the 18th, 2019. I'm going to turn 85 
in October. I feel like there's an there's an important importance to a name in its era. So my question is, how common would you say your name was back in the 40s and 50s? Well, my I was born in 1934, and that year there was lots and lots of Shirley's. And as I've gone through life, the University of Idaho and um, lots of places in Idaho, I met a lot of Shirley's, and we were named after Shirley Temple, who was the most famous movie star, a child movie star, and she saved. MGM from bankruptcy as she was Shirley Temple. She was uh, a really wonderful child star. And everybody wanted, they ha we had curls and danced and sang just like Shirley Temple. So everybody wanted their daughter to be like Shirley Temple. Um, my mother, every morning, I w she would put ringlets around her finger and put bobby pins up um, on the on the on the curls, and there would be double row curls. And I did that every single morning, and I had to sit quiet <laughs> while my mother made curls in my hair. It was always in curls, and it was done every single day. It took. Uh, it seemed to me like. <laughs> It took probably an hour. I also had to have cod liver oil every morning. We during the forties we were on rations because of World War Two, mm -hmm. and so um, we didn't have much sugar, and uh, we didn't. We maybe have meat on Sunday, and usually it was rabbit that we raised in our backyard because we couldn't get meat. But my mother would sometimes get a little extra meat because we had uh, coupons for cigarettes. I came really close with a butcher mm -hmm. in this one store, and he would give her some meat for his cigarette coupons. We didn't go on trips because gas was on uh, was rationed. Mm -hmm. and we had to have coupons for gas, so we walked a lot. What do you remember about your work life in the 40s and 50s? Well, I started working when I was in uh, sixth grade. And um, actually, I started working when I was in third grade. I took care of a little girl every morning and fixed her breakfast mm -hmm. and her lunch and, uh, and her dinner. And I had her from six o'clock in the morning until five o'clock at night taking care of her when I was in third grade um, every single day in the summer while her mother was working. And my mother was working, so I didn't have any assistance. Um, and so I was completely in charge. And I started working when I was in sixth grade. Um, and I worked to the um, receptions. I worked at the receptionist for a real estate office. And... Um, and he taught me a lot. He taught me that one thing he said to me is, um, the door opens many times in your life, and it's uh, whether you open it or not, or just ignore it, but if you open the door, you'll have lots of opportunities, and if you just ignore and don't open that door, then you miss out on your life. And so I always remembered that. I love that. That's what I learned in sixth grade. And then in eighth grade, I worked as a, as in an ice cream shop. I dished up ice cream and, um, and we get pints of ice cream and some other ice cream cones, or I made milkshakes and I, and I tossed hamburgers. Mm -hmm. What was one of your fondest memories in the 40s and 50s? Great Northern Railroad came right through Great Falls. They always would come on a train to visit us from Wyoming. Oh, wow. It was so fun to go down the train, and, and she'd get off the train. She'd come to our house, 
Aww. Her name was Charlotte Lindsay, and she was such a fun great grandma. She could hardly walk, but one time we were, we had a lot of steps in our house, and she, um, we were, she decided to go to the movie. My books were gone. And so she said, let's go to the movie. And so she sat on her bottom and went down the steps, and then we got to the road, and, and she put her thumb out to hitchhike and hitchhike <laughs> to the movie. <laughs> into the movie and they had some singing going on in the movie and she, I remember her singing out loud but she was a fun lady okay Shirley did you have a favorite outfit or style can you describe it for me there was a real difference between the style of California girls and the Montana Wyoming girls even in anklets, we wore um, we wore saddle oxfords uh, that were di multicolored. They were black and white, or blue and white, or and uh, we wore moccasins, lots of moccasins. That was our casual um, shoe. I was going to tell you about the Pendleton because the girls who couldn't afford the Pendleton clothes, they would often get a jacket that was similar and and they would actually steal the label off of the Pendleton's in the stores store and sew it onto their clothes. okay uh, and Jansen sweaters okay they were Jansen sweaters I worked after the ice cream place then I went to work at a department store and that's what the girls would do they would actually cut out the labels and then re-sew them into their clothes it was that important uh, I wore clothes that showed up my off my figure, and I got and I always wore really nice dresses, and um, when I started to date Lynn, I would we go to lots of dances, and we were um, full. Sometimes we'd wear full slips under our clothes too, and. Uh, invariably we'd go to a dance or something and it was kind of funny because my slip would always come loose or something <laughs> and I'd always, always be embarrassed those days we never talked about like if you went on a date you never told a boy that you needed to go to the restroom you just said uh, I, I guess I need to have you stop and um, so then they would stop but you never mentioned bathroom things mm -hmm. And it was always girls uh, waiting for the boys to ask them out. And when we go to dances, we go to single dances. And um, so rather than being a wallflower, we would move around the room <laughs> so that we'd stop in one place and for a little while. And then we'd just keep rotating around the room so that we never looked like we were a wallflower staying in one spot in the 40s and 50s life was quite a bit different um, we've already heard a, some major differences in style names what was your living experience like well i graduated from high school in 52 and uh i had a wonderful i had a wonderful teenage years in high school because I had really, really close friends. In fact, the friends that are still alive are, we still correspond and we still um, call each other on the telephone. So I have really, really close friends. Many of them have passed away you now. Most of them passed away because they died of emphysema because they were cigarette smokers. And uh, the ones that are still alive did never, they never smoked cigarettes and um and so they didn't live they didn't live that life where everybody smoked and they're the ones that are still alive and there's three of us left after the war ended in 45 um life was really good i remember when 
I got, we got our first TV when I was about, um, probably a junior in high school. It was the first TV that came into our home and, um, it was always black and white. Uh, they took the TV out of it, but it was a big piece of furniture. Oh, wow. They had really good shows, uh, better. I think they had better shows then than they do now. Series. I used to listen to the radio, uh, and a lot and listen to series they'd have mysteries mystery series on the radio and, and you just listen to the radio and follow along and uh and the way we went to movies we usually took a a uh, milk cap because bottles came milk came with with caps on them and we would uh take the cap of the, of the milk bottle and then we would go to the movies and they would take the cap from the milk bottle as a as an entry into the movies. And I entertained a lot um, and on the stage in between movies and um, because people weren't used to entertainment too much on TV. And so you did live entertainment. I entertained a lot of clubs. I did a lot of that, did a lot of that. Um, in the late 40s and the 50s, I entertained at the fair and uh, the night shows. They would have these fan dancers. I got acquainted with a lot of these fan dancers. They danced with fans. They were almost nude, except that they danced with these fans. They caused the audience to always anticipate. What would you say you did for fun? Well, in the 40s and, and 50s, we would drag the Main Street. We would get in a car, a bunch of girls, and we would drive down Main Street and, um, and back and forth, and there'd be a bunch of boys in the car Maybe driving Main Street. And eventually, <laughs> we would talk to each other. Uh -huh. Okay. So it was dragging the, dragging the Main Street. That's what we did. Later in high school, I, we went to ball games, and I we walked. We never had a car to drive us there. We would walk lots of miles to the ball game, and eventually, my girlfriends and I got to date the baseball players and I went I dated a fellow by the name of Len Payne my name, maiden name was Payne and um, and then they'd win all of these restaurant coupons so they'd take us out we'd go out as a group with the baseball players and we'd go to restaurants and um, that was a fun summer to go with all these baseball baseball players they were from uh, on a league national league but the other thing is we dragged the game street that's what we did every week or so my girlfriends and i would dress up with hats and gloves and dress in our dresses we'd always have hats and gloves that went with our dresses and we'd just go out to a regular restaurant and and eat as a group of girls oh. and uh, that's what we did every week we had a group of boys that we high school boys that we piled around with and so they, they would rent a room uh in um the bottom of the bakery or different places that you could rent rooms and we would have a we would have play records and we would always have a dance card. If we went to a formal, uh, like a high school dance, there was a dance card. And so right in the beginning, all of these people would come up with these boys and, and they'd trade dances. So if you went with a boy to a dance, invariably you might dance the first dance and the last dance with them. So they were dance cards that we had. And so they'd fill out the dance cards. And that's what we did when we had these individual parties. And... Um, 
And that was really fun because you danced with all of these different boys all night long. So it didn't matter who you went to dance with, if you liked them or not, because you didn't dance with them very often. You danced them the first dance and the last dance. It was all. And uh, so we did a lot of those individual parties that our parents would um, rent a room and we'd have a chaperone there, of course. And then we'd have parties and that was fun. We did a lot of hay rides and had horses pull us and, and we'd be on the hay, hay rides and some would sit in there, some would, wouldn't they just have fun? So it was a, that we did that a lot. Can you tell me a little bit more about what your day would have looked like back in the 40s and 50s? I get up early in the morning and practice my piano first thing. And, um, and then I would go to school. I only had to walk three blocks. In fact, most of my friends would all come to my house because the football practice field was directly <laughs> across from my house. So you were my, such a flirt. My girlfriends were all there every night watching the football players practice. But anyway, we go to go to school. We we walked lots of steps in the high school, and um, and we went from class to class to class. And I took a lot of home ec classes and typing and shorthand classes. So I learned to be a good stenographer and a good typist and had my word percentage pretty high. And then I um, took all the home ec classes, sewing and cooking and um, science. Do you have an embarrassing story from the 40s and 50s? The worst thing that ever happened to me is I was going on a trip and I and I was pouring coffee on this uh, to this lady in her in a, in a um, table mm -hmm. and I spilled the coffee all over. Her. Oh no! And I was really <laughs> embarrassed. I never forgot that. She wasn't very happy with me either, no. <laughs> but. I was young. So then I went, uh, it was because I was excited and going on this trip. I went to Wyoming to visit my cousin. Uh -huh. day, and I was excited about going. I went on a train by myself. Nowadays, it's so common for young people to feel anxious and depressed and sad and, and just scared of... <laughs> life in general i want to know how often you felt scared or anxious and what were your experiences like when you did feel scared and anxious well we never heard the word depression ever we never, we never heard anybody ever say they were depressed or, uh, just um i think there's too much concentration on depression um, I have too many, too many worries about how am I feeling today or how I'm not feeling good. Or, you know, I just think you just go with the day. And there's some sad times, like when my husband passed away. That was kind of mixed emotions because he wasn't well. But it's lonely. And I think life's an adjustment. Um, I think you handle life. You, you just don't dwell on how, whether I'm depressed or whether I'm sad or, or don't feel good today and stuff. I, I think a lot of it is your attitude about life. I laugh a lot. I, that's why I enjoy kids. We laugh a lot. We go out and we just laugh. Mm -hmm. But that's the way life is. You just do the things you can do. Some things you can't. But I think it was expected that I would was happy. I don't think I was ever unhappy. I don't think I ever was unhappy. I, like I was that. always happy. Always happy. 
I think it's, I think it's just um, living life to the fullest. I've tried to live my life to the fullest. I figure that if I've got one more day, I can, I can dance. Okay, so it's obvious that kids nowadays have a completely different experience than someone, say, in the 40s and 50s would have. We know this and we say this, but I want to know the details. I want to know what it was like to grow up in the 40s and 50s. Can you compare your childhood to today's kids? Well, number one, I could walk all over all over town, and I did because I walked to my dancing lessons, which was all the way downtown. It was law. And I, I did that when I was really young. Mm-hmm. And home. Nowadays, you can't have the, you can't walk around the block without somebody walking with you for fear that you would be um, not safe. The thing that I think is sad is a lot of time is spent wasted. Uh, on the computer, I would and, agree. And then they're not—they're not socializing. They're not talking to each other. They're—they're um, they're working on the computer. Mm-hmm. If you're not careful. Your dinner table. Everybody's on the computer. And nobody's socializing, talking to each other. When when my children were little, I would bring up a subject because I wanted them to discuss it, and uh, I. It's, Sometimes I would get educational things mm-hmm. that I would want them to talk about. And they talked about it at the dinner table. And we communicated as a family. And if you notice that they still communicate with each other, most of them. Mm-hmm. But if you're not careful, your computer will take over your life and you won't communicate with the, your loved ones. Yeah. And then there's comparisons um, I think that's the bad thing is that sometimes you're comparing yourself with somebody else and um, and everybody has good qualities and you and you shouldn't really compare yourself with somebody else you enjoyed listening to Shirley Sanders stories about the 40s and 50s we will be interviewing again next week Iona Butler she's got some awesome stories for you guys and I also wanted to recap the three things that I learned while interviewing Shirley one it's important to spend more time with your family and friends and give them your undivided attention rather than spending it on social media and technology. Social media is awesome. It's amazing. It does so many things, but in reality, it can hurt your relationships with the people that you love and should spend time with. Number two, comparison is a thief of joy. And number three, life is an adjustment. So if this is one thing I really liked, when When change comes around, when change is hard, adjust to it. And if you figure out how to adjust to life circumstances, you'll be a lot happier. So adjust to life. I love that. This is Steph with an F on your favorite denim couch. I'm signing off. Until next week. Bye. Wait, 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 wait. You can't miss the embarrassing story of the week. No, no, no. Okay. It's that time. It's Steph with an F's Embarrassing Story of the Week. This week's embarrassing story is when I went to church and saw my best friend's dad for the first time in a long time. I went in for a hug. We hugged. And coming out, I can see that my fuchsia lipstick is etched on his white collar. (laughs) Not collar etched on his white um, shoulder. That came out wrong too. Um, Yeah, it was on his white shirt. And I didn't say anything. I just, 
yeah, I just left. So Kevin, if you're listening, um, that was me and I apologize. So probably would have been better. I, you guys tell me, I don't, it probably would have been less awkward if I would have told him, but I didn't. Yeah. Okay. So that's my embarrassing story. Fuchsia lipstick on your best friend's dad's white collared shirt. Uh, but if you're listening, and I know we cover the we cover my main question, which is, were people generally happier in the past, in the decades of the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s? And happiness is a big topic. I feel like um, our generation dwells on happiness and joy. So that's where I'm going with that. Um, but I do want to want to say if you came here for mental health help um, please go visit your doctor if you're looking for um, some mental health tips Dr. Daniel Amen is someone I follow I love what he has to say and offer um, I think his website is uh, brainhealthassessment.com and he just has uh, some of the some awesome checklist items that go over brain health so like checklist items for um, habits, habits that you should be doing to have better brain health. Um, I, don't know, I want to say there's like five to 10 items. And if you have those, if you're working on those habits and trying to improve them to improve your brain health, you'll also improve your happiness level because brain health equals mental health. So keep your brains happy and healthy and check out Dr. Daniel Amen. This is not sponsored. I just really like what he has to say, and I think it's really beneficial. I think it can help a lot of people. Um, it's actually very matter of fact, um, kind of obvious, but yet yeah, we neglect so many of these habits daily. And I do feel like, um, you know, if you're feeling unhappy, that may be one of the reasons you're unhappy because you're ne neglecting your brain health. Um, which is also your men mental health. And, and yeah, trying to improve these habits could really help. So check him out. Uh, if you have any stories from the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s, please get in contact with me. Let's chat. I want nothing more than to chat about the past. I want nothing more than to chat about the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. If you have any specific questions that I'm not asking that you would like to know about these eras while interviewing these people, please let me know. I would love some advice and I would love your input. So what would you guys like to know? 